prophecy is how they enslave us! What hidden dangers lurk in the shadows of Paul Atreides' reign in Dune Messiah? Can the prophecy of Muad'Dib withstand the shifting sands of power in the sequel? The Dune universe is expanding and you're in for a sandstorm of a surprise. Well, we warn you, there may be spoilers ahead. Dune fans were left reeling at the end of Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2 with a shocking cliffhanger of Paul Atreides unleashing a holy war across the universe. While it was a powerful ending, it left many viewers wondering, what could come next? The answer is Dune Messiah, the second book in Frank Herbert's epic Dune saga, which is said to be adapted into the third film in Villeneuve's trilogy. We know you must be curious to know about the cast. Although the casting for a prospective Dune Messiah movie has not yet been officially announced, expectations are that several key members of the cast from the first Dune film will return if the sequels move forward. The anticipated returning cast members include Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Florence Pugh, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, and Josh Brolin. So what is the basic premise of Dune Messiah? Dune Messiah picks up story threads from the ending of Dune and explores the consequences of Paul's choice to embrace his role as the prophesy. Far from being a traditional sequel, Messiah subverts the hero's journey narrative of the first book. As the novel opens, Paul rules as emperor over an uneasy peace, having conquered most of the known universe through religious war and genocide. However, his position is increasingly precarious as various factions plot to bring down his regime. What major challenges does Paul face in Messiah? In the 12 years since the events of Dune, Paul has walked the path of the Kwisatz Haderach and can see into the future with powerful, prescient abilities. However, this gift has become prison, as he realizes he is bound to a strict golden path with no room for deviation if humanity is to survive. Haunted by his visions of the future, Paul becomes increasingly inhuman and removed from those he loves. His wife, Chani, and his unborn sister, Aaliyah, who is a powerful, reverend mother in her own right, witness firsthand how absolute power has corrupted Paul. Meanwhile, the Emperor faces threats on all sides, the Bene Gesserit, the Spacing Guild, the Bene Tilelax face dangers, Princess Irulan, and even some disillusioned Freeman tribes conspire against him in complex political intrigues. The weight of his terrible prescient knowledge has made Paul a tragic figure fighting to prevent an even worse future. One of Dune Messiah's core themes is exploring the corrupting nature of absolute power and the dangerous fallacy of religious messianic fervor. Paul realizes he is trapped by his own mythic persona, the Muad'Dib, who was prophesied to lead the free men to their promised future. In unleashing the Jihad, he has awakened a fundamentalist movement that now views him as a revered figure rather than a man. The novel examines how powerful individuals who try to shape the course of human history are often overwhelmed by the consequences of their actions. Even with his incredible powers of foresight, Paul can never fully control the religious empire he has unleashed. Herbert seems to be warning against our human tendency to put our faith in future in the hands of individuals, supposedly enlightened leaders, who claim to have all the answers. How does Chani's role change in Messiah compared to the book? One of the most intriguing changes Villian Wave made in Part 2 was to have Chani leave Paul at the end, rejecting his embrace of the Jihad and the terrible violence against her people. This sets up Chani as a potential foil or opposition to Paul and Messiah. In the book, Chani remains by Paul's side even as she grows disillusioned with the course he has put humanity on. The film change opens up fascinating story possibilities where Chani could take on a more active role. She may refuse to participate in the Holy War and could even lead a Freeman rebellion against Paul and his religious empire, trying to sever her people's ties to the bloody Jihad. This would create emotional, romantic stakes where Chani tries to save her husband Paul from himself and steer him off the terrible golden path he has foreseen. What is Aaliyah's importance to the story? Aaliyah is perhaps the most fascinating and disturbing character in Dune Messiah. The infant daughter of Paul and the reverend mother Jessica, Aaliyah, was massively impacted by her mother's agony while drinking the toxic water of life while pregnant. 
This imbued the unborn Aaliyah with full consciousness and the genetic memories of her ancestors. The result is Aaliyah is born as a preborn, an eerie elderly intelligence trapped in the body of a newborn. In the novel, the 12 year old Aaliyah takes on the role of Reverend Mother and Regent for Paul's Empire, wielding immense political and psychic influence despite her childlike appearance. In the film, we have already seen hints of Aaliyah's disturbing interior voice reaching out to her mother, Jessica. You might be wondering how the Bennett Tilaylax fits into the story. Among the chief antagonists in Dune Messiah is the Bennett Tilaylax, who is hinted at briefly in Dune through the monstrous dwarf creature that the Reverend Mother controls with the voice. This bizarre group was among humanity's greatest genetic engineers, creators of the Gula Duncan Idaho, and other twisted discoveries. The Tilaylax have created a powerful group of shape-shifting face dancers who infiltrate Paul's regime as part of their conspiracy against him, along with the Bene Gesserit and the Spacing Guild. They also develop means to negate Paul's prescient visions and surprise him at every turn. The Tilaylax dwarf feature in Dune may have been an early experiment in their genetic manipulation programs, hinting at the full-body horror the Messiah film could unleash. What other threats does Paul face in the novel? The Bene Gesserit have hatched a scheme to use Paul's concubine Irulan to conceive a daughter, whom they can raise and control as a new Chrysot's Hadarach to topple Paul. Meanwhile, the Spacing Guild fears that their monopoly on interstellar travel will be threatened. Paul must also contend with a conspiracy amongst his own defeated foes. A contingent of Freeman tribes remains disillusioned by Paul's actions and views him as having betrayed their ways. Even his first wife Chani and some people in his palace plotted against him. Paul's empire is built on a rapidly crumbling foundation held together only by religious fanaticism and fear. How does the book end and set up potential future stories? Dune Messiah ends on a shocking note as Paul walks into the desert alone, blinded after having a terrifying vision of the far future. He entrusts his children, Ganima and Leto II, to his mother Jessica and leaves them to fulfill the rest of the Golden Path, a plan to guide humanity safely through countless millennia by any means necessary. This fertile story point leaves many avenues for continuation. Villeneuve has suggested focusing solely on Messiah for the third film, but Herbert wrote several further sequels. That's a wrap on our expedition through the sands of Arrakis and the enigmatic world of Dune Messiah. We've uncovered secrets, speculated on prophecies, and delved into the depths of power. If you're thirsty for more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for further journeys into the universe of intrigue and sandstorms. Until then, may your wisdom match the depth of the desert.